Sasha. And how old did you say Sasha was? Nine. Nine years old. Fantastic. Sasha, did you have a good time today? Now, I'm going to give you a treat. I don't know if she's into it, but you know, you can take one home. And if, if she doesn't like it, you can give it to somebody else. Sasha? Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, wow, that's neat. Here we go. Hello, so I'm going to talk about cleft palates and dogs today. Um, she did not have one, but most of the stuff that she has had, you guys have already talked about. So, um, her cousin, with my aunt's French Bulldog, has a cleft palate, so I just decided to talk about that. Um, so, what is it? So, there's a cleft palate and a cleft lip. Um, cleft palate as you can see here, would be in the hard palette or in the soft palette. And then cleft lip would be more visible and it's actually on the exterior lip. Um, so cleft just means divided into two. And then this is a birth defect, so it'll happen like in utero while they're developing. Um, you can, you can, it can like vary. You can have both cleft palate and cleft lip. You can have just a uh, cleft in the soft palate or in the hard palate, so it kind of like depends on the severity of it. And then, so it's, it's an opening that goes into the nasal cavity, so then they would have problems breathing and also like eating or drinking any sort of thing. So cleft lip, as you can see in this picture, would be on the lip and then it can go up to like into the nose. And so it can be on in the middle on either side. Um, it's usually the, like once they're born, it's usually the first thing you'll notice. It's harder to detect a cleft palate because you can't, unless you're opening your puppy, the puppy's mouth, you won't tell until a little bit after, which we'll talk about. Um, so this one doesn't necessarily require surgery, but people are like, looks will do it. Um, but dogs can live like this just fine and then and also cleft lip is more common than cleft palate and so how to tell here's just more pictures i found of cleft lips so you can tell here this one has it on like both sides and here's just on one side it kind of just depends um so like i said you'll detect this right as like the litter is born you can see it um it's a little harder in puppies because they're so small and it'll get kind of, as they grow, it'll be more noticeable, but you'll tell as soon as they're born. And then detection of the cleft lip. So this is kind of, I mean the palate, sorry. My aunt's dog, who like inspired the presentation, he, his looks just like this. And then if you look at that, that's actually a piece of food that like gets stuck in there. So symptoms that'll help you detect this are, so they'll have a runny nose, They'll cough a lot, and then aspiration pneumonia is a really big issue with this because any sort of water or even the milk, they can't really grab onto their moms correctly because it doesn't create a suction. So then they can't drink milk properly. And that's another way they'll detect it is because they just don't grow. It's like the runts. They, they'll be really, really small, and they won't get as much milk, and so they're not growing properly. Um, so, and this also leads to weight loss. If they're not eating enough, they're not gonna gain weight, they're not gonna grow well. So here you can see this one, because I like this picture. It's just an opening into the nasal cavity, so any like water is gonna go into the lungs. And then this is also a problem. If you get them surgery, I'm gonna talk about it a little later, but you can get surgery or you can leave it. My aunt decided to leave it on her dog. It was more of like, she breeds dogs, and this guy who breeds French Bulldogs said, if you can let it live, it's yours. So she like tube fed it, and he lived, and then, so now it's hers, and he's fine. She never got surgery. It was smaller than this, so he didn't have as much problems, and then like as he grew up, it kind of closed itself. So it is possible, I don't think people, she's not from here, she's from Costa Rica, they don't, like, they don't do this all the time, they don't do things properly all the time, um, but, he, he's his like fused together as he grew older and he doesn't have problems anymore, but people will normally get surgeries right away. But you do have to wait a little bit. 
Um, so why it happens, so during the pregnancy, it's a lot of this is genetics, but they also think that during the pregnancy, the mom is going to get into some sort of poison, or it could also be if she's being treated for chemo, a uh, certain medication can have an effect on the development of the puppies. And so dogs that are likely to have it are Bricks and Alex, so Bulldogs, French Bulldogs, Shih Tzu, since they're also short paced dogs, Beagles, Dodsons, and then Siamese cats. So cats can also have it, people also have it. Um, so genetics is the main cause, but then there's also, I found that cortisone infect injections, and then if she gets any virus while she's pregnant or disease, this can have a big impact on if the puppies will be born with this. Uh, the litter that my aunt got, they were all born with it, so it can be one. It's also a bulldog, so the dog could have a lot of puppies, but they did all have it, and then, oh, this is him. His name's Thor. Um, so he's the one that has it. Um, yeah, he's like four now, mm -hmm. so. He's good. He's good. Now, before you go on, um, yeah, I know there's like could be a genetic cause, but I'm looking at the environmental factors in utero. Does anybody know the name, the general name given to agents that mess up embryonic development? It's like a, a group of uh, I don't want to say chemicals because it's almost can be anything that affects embryonic development, and it's not genetic; it's some factor. Teratogens? Teratogens. Now help me spell that. T E R T. I think it's T E R A T O gens. Rat gens. That's how I remember it. Teratogens, sorry. T E and then rat o gens. Teratogens. Um, I know for sure there's chemicals that are teratogens. There's some very famous ones that have affected the human population. I think years ago, I can't remember the name of the compound, but they're in human medicine, uh, women that were uh, had severe morning sickness, they prescribed, uh, and I, I, it's on the tip of my tongue, but some chemical, some drug, and unbeknownst to them, thalidomide, it, thalidomide thank you, it was right there, yeah, thalidomide, <laughs> yeah, thalidomide, it was very famous, it was really messing up the, uh, the babies that were developing, and then there's another one, and now this one's, I don't have on the tip of my tongue, there was some agent that I can't remember if it was purposely given to pregnant women or by accident. I think it was something prescribed. But not only, um, it was really weird. It affected the female fetuses, but then I also think it affected the female fetuses of the original fetuses. Now that's amazing. Like, okay, so you have a, a baby girl developing in the uterus and this chemical, and I, I'll maybe tell you later sometime another day, it affected the female's development, but then it also carried on if that female fetus had fetuses later. I mean, wow. Talk about long-term effects. Back to you, kiddo. Also, I forgot to mention, so I did find that sometimes deficiencies in some nutrients can help prevent it. So if like you don't have any like vitamin A imbalances, it could, like, they've kind of seen that it could affect it or not. Right, and so now I get, since you brought that up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this also works in the human population, right? I mean, this would be you know, almost like the same list. And the thing is, that's why when women are pregnant, it's so important to get that prenatal care. I think they have prenatal vitamins and they check on a lot of things because, I mean, there's things developing that if, if they're short of some nutrient or something, then it affects that baby's life, yeah. the whole life, so. So, in humans, I tried to find some, like, stats about animals, but it was hard. So, um, I thought, so another, like, smoking, drugs, alcohol during a pregnancy can affect if your baby has cleft lip or cleft palate. Um, males get it more than females, mm -hmm. and then obesity is linked to cleft palate. So it must be obesity of the mother of then? The, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so in animals, it, it'd be hard to detect a cleft lip through ultrasound. I mean, it'd be like you could possibly do it, but cleft palate definitely not. Um, but in like people at 13 weeks, you can start detecting it if it's there or not. 
Um, and then puppies could die, but normally will die of starvation, especially if it's like breeders that don't have time to take care of these puppies and just will kind of let life take its course unless somebody wants to try and keep them alive. And then there's a short video of something that dogs will do, like if, and then my aunt's dog does this too, when he drinks water, they drink it, um, they'll like lift their head up so they can swallow it. So instead of, so it's harder for them still. But so they've learned to yeah. adapt. To yeah, that. so they will adapt like that and mm -hmm. drink water that way. And then, so just a couple stats. So I, th I thought it was really interesting. So every three minutes, a baby is born with a, uh, either cleft lip or cleft palate. Like I said before, cleft lip is more common. Um, and then in total, 8,088 babies are born with either of them a year. And so surgery is usually people's like first thing that they'll go to. You do have to wait until the dog is three to four months. Um, this is just for like size purposes. They can't give a like super small puppy anesthesia and they have to be completely sedated. Um, and then you have to make sure your puppy doesn't have pneumonia since that is the first thing that will usually happen to all of them. Before going to surgery, it has to make sure the dog is very like, is healthy. Um, and then the surgery is pretty complicated, so this isn't something that like any vet would probably do. And there's a video of it on a cat. It's a little weird. They, and the music's weird. <laughs> so they'll like cut around, like cut into the palate. The cat's like upside down. Mm -hmm. So dorsal recumbency. Yeah, and see, right. sometimes when you're a surgeon, you like to have music playing. <laughs> you do. It relaxes you. So you can see mm. the hole. It's a, it's a bad video. The hole's right there, and they're cutting like the sides of it so that later they can suture it, and there's more like flexibility. So that Maybe they good. cut off some soft tissue so when they do the suture, yeah. it's onto something that will hold. Yeah, and then he ends up suturing this part, mm -hmm. which was where the hole was, but he leaves the gashes that he made open. So, that's mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And fun. there's your sources. Yep. Okay, comments, questions, <laughs> experiences with this, observing surgery done like this. Somebody surely can make some comment, huh? Don't be bashful. People are bashful today? No, not really. Anybody have any experience with this? I have a feeling, you know, the statistics you gave, uh, like for the human population, I have a feeling that's like probably just the United States, right? I, I saw, I looked up one for the U.S. and said more like 2,000. Oh, okay, so maybe, maybe yeah. that was including worldwide. I know, yeah, okay. So, uh, now, what's interesting with dogs, and if a litter has it, or, well, especially a litter with all of the puppies, then that breeder should look at the pedigree of that litter and say, no, we're not going to breed dogs anymore unless they know yeah. the female or the male is the carrier or something. Because that's... Yeah, she, my aunt, she's using her dog as just like... Yeah, and pet. she just has a pet now. Yeah. She's not breeding, which is good. I mean, but you know how some people are, the puppy mills, they would still keep breeding those animals and <coughs> propagating problems. But a good breeder always, when they sell you a dog, they always want to know, well, let me know how, how it is. Like, I remember when I bought my Newfoundlands, every year the one woman from Milwaukee wanted to know how the female she sold me because she was that interested in the pedigree and any health issues and you know sometimes come things come up later like chronic renal failure won't show up until later in life but other comments if not